There are two main things that all hospitals pretty much stop as soon as a patient enters the hospital that can be life-threatening to the patient. One is if you were taking lots of vitamins or mega vitamins like sorbic acid, which has been known, vitamin C, which is the same, uh, sorbic acid actually is what is produced in all the animal world. It's not, it's the one vitamin that actually you can get synthetic that is the same. Uh, but if you're taking all these vitamins and you go in a hospital, the first thing that happens is they stop giving you these extra vitamins. Like vitamin C can be very antiviral, antimicrobial, can help you repair the body. Um, and acetylcysteine can work very well with it to help improve the immune system, green tea extract. A lot of different vitamins can help you tremendously, especially in the optimal amounts. If you look at um, Linus Pauling's site, you know, the two-time Nobel Peace Prize winner, one, when one was in chemistry, he coined that term orthomolecular medicine, which is medicine with nutrition. In other words, taking the optimal amounts of nutritional supplements to help heal and keep the body at optimal levels. The first thing they do when you go in a hospital is, if you're taking all these vitamins, they're not coming with you. You're just going to have whatever food they give you, and that's it, and they give you the medicines and everything else. So that, to me, is a... To me, it's a major crime because the doctors must know that nutrition is absolutely, they know it's absolutely essential to life, I know that, as far as in general statement, but they seem to avoid the most obvious thing. And it goes all the way back to, you know, the father of medicine, where let food be thy medicine. I mean, basically, that's what's ignored in all hospitals. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, you know, if you go in there and you got a problem with something, first thing you're going to do is stop all your medical, medical, all your extra supplements and put you on all these medical procedures. To me, that's a danger. That's a major danger. Now, of course, if you get, you know, some injury whereby you fell off a roof or, I don't know, you got in a car accident, obviously, you know, there's, there's, you know, you're not going to be able to avoid a hospital trip. But to tell you the truth, um, I think you know hospitals pretty much are consciously ignorant, will, willfully ignorant of what the obvious is. It's like at the very least they ought to be giving people multivitamin pills for crying out loud to help them out. You know, if you raise your vitamin D levels. For instance, you can pretty much reverse most cancers. That's been pretty much established. It's not that easy to do because it's not just a matter of taking vitamin D. You want to take it with K2. And you also got to have adequate amounts of magnesium or else your vitamin D levels will never go up. But there's also a second main thing that they used to do back in the 1920s that was pretty much curing people of almost every illness out there. And it's free. It doesn't even cost anything. And no, they don't do that today. Maybe they do in foreign countries, but sure as heck not in the United States of America with our overburdened, overcostly medical system. The other thing they don't do, which they used to do back in the 1920s, was use the benefits of the sun, which right now the sun is behind a cloud, but you still get the benefits of the sun. You're still getting UV rays. The sun, besides helping the body to produce vitamin D, as it produces vitamin D, it uses the cholesterol in your body to help produce the vitamin D, so it lowers your cholesterol, so it helps eliminate the need for statin drugs and everything. Um, the other side of it is, too, there's the frequencies that are coming out from the sun have been known to, well, you actually get uh, the frequencies penetrate the outer layer of the skin, and it will help uh, cleanse the blood of micro of, of problems like uh, that are you know microbes that are in the blood. The other side of it is will help also help energize and boost the immune system because the blood flow that's near the skin when it's exposed to sunlight, the sunlight still penetrates the skin. The frequencies themselves help boost the macrophages in the white blood cells and actually help 
knock out microbes. Also, it helps improve the mood. Sunlight, even like when you're outside on a cloudy day like this, you're still getting sunlight. But back in the 1920s, they had the solariums, and everybody that was in a high-tech hospital, which was considered a high-tech hospital, used to roll the patients out in the sun, and it worked like crazy. It wasn't just to cure rickets or something like that from lack of vitamin D. It pretty much cured everything. As a matter of fact, I could tell you there's a person down here in Florida, um, a friend of a friend. He's 86 years old. He's on absolutely no medicines or anything. He's 86 or 87 years old. All he does is lay out in the sun every day. I don't think he lays out in the sun all day, but he's out there maybe, you know, 20 to 40 minutes. And... He's got, no absolute, he's got absolutely no health problems, and he's absolutely the right way. Do not underestimate the power of the sun. They knew this back in the 1920s, but there's no money involved in it. So, anyway, for rebel health here, <laughs> you know, you know, the sun isn't out right now, but even when you're out on a cloudy day, it helps. It does help. And it does help the psyche, because even, you know, the best time to be out in the sun to help with the vitamin D production is between... 11 o'clock in the morning and 2 p.m. And you actually have to be below a certain latitude in the winter months to get any kind of benefits. But you still get other benefits from the sun, even during sunsets. Sunsets, you get, uh, you know, the rays, the long wavelength uh, types of rays, which is the red color. And what happens is it actually helps the psyche. You know, anybody could tell you when you're out there by the beach and you're looking out at the sunset, it makes you feel so damn good. See, that's the other benefit of being outside. You get this, um, you know, this winter problem when you're inside too much. It's not just vitamin D levels. It's actually, it's called um, you know, when you're absolutely not exposed to the sunlight enough. You can get artificial lamps. And that's one thing they could probably do in hospitals is set up, you know, artificial lamps to get some kind of UV rays out there every once in a while for the patients rather than wheeling them in. But they won't do this. They don't do this. The other side of it is, it helps create a more sterile environment in a hospital, but they won't do that either. In other words, UV radiation, or UV, not radiation, but UV types of sunlight is a way, you know, if you say you can't wash your clothes, you put your clothes out on a clothesline in a, in a bright sun, it'll kill the microbes. The sunlight will kill the microbes. It'll help bring down some of those staph infections in the hospitals. They do have high-tech devices that shoot all these lights out and stuff that cost thousands of dollars. But somebody engineered that and sold it for, you know, $100,000. A simple, you know, sun lamp or sun bulb, sun lamp type bulbs that are in the ceiling that can be turned on every once in a while for the patients would do wonders. But they don't do that. They don't do that. They would be boosting up their vitamin D levels. They'd be improving their serotonin, their dopamine levels in the brain, their mood. Uh, making them feel better so they want to get better, but they don't do that. They don't do that type of stuff. You know, the sun's going to be out there, maybe. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit typical Florida. Florida's, uh, could be sometimes it could be sunny and raining at the same time. It's a pretty weird place to live, you know, because, uh, you know, sometimes the sun could be out when the sun, thunderstorm could be over here and it's raining at the same time. One of the few places that does that quite often. And it's raining right now, so I'm going to be coming inside, but you know, it's one thing these hospitals don't do. It's, it's, so it's two things. The optimal nutrition, and number two, is the sunlight. And here comes the rain. <laughs>